Hello, Timothy. Hi, Katie. If you could just um, tell us a little bit about yourself as well, that would be cool. My name is Timothy Connor Daly, um, and I'm primarily a writer of poetry, plays, and fiction. Um, I live in Austin, Texas, where I've lived my whole life. Um, and uh, I have a BA in English Writing and Rhetoric with a specialization in Creative Writing from St. Edward's University. And that is me in a nutshell. Well, um, I, I think that real art over commercial art is such an important part of any society. Um, it's sort of a lens that we can see the human condition through. Um, mass media, of course, is everywhere, um, as you know. Um, and it can be argued that it has its place, but, but real art sort of transcends media, I think. Um, and uh, as far as writing in spe specifically is concerned, um, visual art and literature have always been really closely linked. Um, and so many writers have used art to inspire their writing. Um, a really good example of that is W.H. Uh, Auden's Musée de Beaux-Arts. Um, and it's, it's based on his reaction to uh, these paintings by uh, Peter Bruegel the Elder. The easy availability of, of images has um, has led to some really cool multimedia projects and, and just like sort of a re-examination a re of how art and how visual art and text um, can interact and, and how they can relate to each other. On the other hand, particularly with cover art, I, I think that, that it's, it's led to some, some bad uh, some bad trends. Uh, in, in the literary world, um, you end up with covers that have really badly photoshopped um, uh, yeah. <laughs> images and and just crazy fonts and and or someone like takes a picture of a cat and then puts it on a person's body and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so so yeah, people are just are are taking any images that they can find that they think can relate to their writing in some way, and they're just very quickly and, and impulsively putting them on the covers of their books. And, and I think that often that has really bad results. Again, to go back to cover art, um, 21st century book covers are just so repetitive. I mean, you look at any romance novel and you see the shirtless guy and often he doesn't have a face for whatever reason. Um, it's always Fabio. It, 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 it's always, he's always very <laughs> Fabio-esque at the very least. I, I hate to keep thinking of, of cover art, but, but to me that's such a, um, just one of the, one of the most important roles that visual art plays in the literary world. Um, so you have all these really iconic cover images, um, particularly from the early, through the, the later part of the mid 20th century. Um, one of my favorites is, is the original cover of The Great Gatsby. Um, it's just this really beautiful and, and kind of unearthly um, image. And then you also have, of course, all of the images that come from the text, um, both the ones that are created in the reader's minds and um, the ones that end up in the various adaptations. Um, you have Harry Potter, sort of his his whole aura, his look, um, the lightning scar and the glasses and everything. Um, and um, then you have these, these lovely sort of images that are kind of left to your own imagination, but they're just so vivid. Um, I have to say that if I had a favorite style of art, it would um, be the art from the high Renaissance period through the early Baroque period. And if I, if I had to choose one chief favorite single artist from the period, I would have to pick Caravaggio. Um, he, to me, embodied the whole spirit of the time. You know, one of the best things a writer can do is to just go to an art museum um, for an afternoon 